Hey everybody, I wanted to share this render with you. I have done it in Udini by using polar coordinates. What you are seeing now on the screen is the deformation of a particle system in polar space. I'll first dive into the project file and then I'll explain what are polar coordinates. Before we start, I highly recommend you download the full project from GitHub. I uploaded everything, including the lighting and shading, and it would be much easier for you to follow up. The project is separated to two main parts, the particle simulation and the polar deformation. First, I'll set the particle simulation source with a sphere and points from volume nodes. I also added the rest attribute in order to color it after the pop simulation. Afterwards, I created the noise attribute and used it to delete areas of the particle source. Hopefully, it would make the simulation a bit more interesting. Inside the pop net, I have added a pop force and a pop axis force. And after playing with the parameters a bit, it resulted in a particle simulation that swirls around the y axis. Then I color the particles using the rest attribute I saved before the pop net. And here we are getting to the interesting part, the polar deformation. Now I will open this point warp and you will see the two polar and from polar nodes. They make the transformation between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. You're probably not familiar with them. To generalize what is going on here, I've transformed the position attribute to polar coordinates. I have applied some sort of manipulation to it and then transformed it back to world space or Cartesian coordinates. Now I'll explain about polar coordinates so it makes a little bit more sense and we'll get back here in a few minutes. You can imagine polar coordinates as trying to describe the position of a person on a sphere. It is very similar to GPS coordinates, which describe your position on Earth by how close you are to the North or South Poles, or the East and the West. And in more technical terms, your latitude and longitude. Another way to imagine it would be to think of the angle between the pole and the human position, where the origin is the center of the Earth. In simpler manner, where GPS coordinates define our position on Earth, which is a sphere, polar coordinates can define our position on a sphere of any size. Let's break down the polar coordinates vector components. U coordinate determines how the person is positioned around the globe, hence the east and the west. V coordinate determines how the person is positioned in relation to the north and south poles of the globe. The third component is the radius and it determines the size of the globe. In the case of Houdini, polar coordinates are wrapped around the z-axis, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Now that we are familiar with the polar coordinates, let's dive back into Houdini and recreate the polar deformation. I'll put a point warp, jump inside of it. Now I'll create a two polar and four polar nodes and connect the corresponding components, outputting to the position attribute as well. Currently, the polar nodes doesn't deform the geometry. They only convert the position attribute to polar space and back to world space. Let's go for the polar node variables one by one. I'll put an add node to offset the U position. Now I can use a constant to actually offset it. Now you can see it spins around the z-axis. Instead of the constant node, I'll use the time attribute to constantly animate it across time. We will use this setup to also animate the v and radius variables of the polar coordinates. Let's take a quick flipbook. So I'll create a camera and I want to change its resolution. So I'll go to the object context and under view resolution. I'll change it to 1920 by 1920. Let's put it here. Dive back into the point warp. And now we can maybe change the camera posi position so it includes everything. Make it full screen to get a bit more quality from the flipbook. And start flipbooking. 
you can see that it spins around the z-axis. Now we can use this setup to animate every, every variable. Right now we are animating or offsetting the u variable. Let's try to offset the v variable now. So I'll disconnect everything. Connect the v variable here instead. Connect to the u to the u, the offset v to the v and the radius. Now we can see how the v is animated. Let's take a flipbook. This deformation is very interesting and uh, also very hard to describe. So let's try and simplify it. I'll duplicate this node and I'll change its input to an add node. I'll add one point. So now basically we have one point that is deforming. We use the polar deform, we can call it polar animate v okay because we are using the time to offset the v component of the polar coordinates to exaggerate the animation i'll use a trail node let's use the particle trail node and i'll set its subset to 10 and its shape to 10 as well okay now you can see the movement more clearly i'll add more points so it's maybe a bit more obvious what is going on here so we can put one here remember that when we are animating the v attribute of the polar coordinates we are animating the longitude we are translating the geometry between the north and the south poles of the sphere let's duplicate the polar deform again and this time we'll animate the radius okay i'll input a pig head instead of a point okay you can see how how the pig head acts when we animate its v component in polar coordinates okay. i'll dive in and now i'll switch between the v to the radius okay so here we input the radius and yeah now you can see the pig is being inflated that's because the radius determines the size of the sphere in polar coordinates raising its value pushes all the points away from the origin we can be even more playful with polar coordinates and instead of using time we can use the position attribute of the geometry let's go back up to the original particle system that i've done Let's look for the camera. As you can see, the particles are going up, which means that the Y component of their position attribute is getting bigger across time. We can abuse this fact and use it to offset the polar coordinates. Now, I want to use the Y component of the position attribute to animate the V parameter of the polar coordinates. So I'll duplicate the polar animate V and connect it to the particle simulation instead. Let's call it polar animate V from position. Let's dive in. Okay. Now we are using time to offset the V attribute, the V component of the polar coordinates. I would like to use the Y component of the position attribute. I'll use the vector to float. And I'll take the second component, this is the Y value basically, and connect it instead. This outputs this weird result. Let's make a quick flick book of, of it right away. This is basically what I have created in the project initially. The last thing remains is to also connect the X and the Z position attribute to the U and the radius components of the polar coordinates. So let's put two more add nodes, connect the U to the X, and another add node to connect the Z 
with the radius. Let's organize it a bit so it makes a bit more sense. Okay. Now this is kind of a mess. So in order to control it, I'll use a fit node. I'll actually promote those parameters so I can control everything above this interface. And I'll rename it to min position and max position. And here I'll set a min amp, minim amplitude. Let's use the size of the particle simulation to fit it first. So I think it's on three. So size minus three, minus two and to here, minus two, and to here. Okay. This already looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I got to this point and uh, I want to control how it wraps around the z-axis so I actually want to animate this parameter I'll go to the first frame, I'll set it to 0 and in the last frame, I'll set, to, set it to, let's say, 1.5 so it gives this uh, very interesting result okay, so this looks pretty interesting let's create a flipbook of this one You can see there is something very interesting happening in the middle. So I'd like to zoom in there and maybe take another flipbook. So I'll create a new camera again. And this time I'll move here. This looks like a good location. We'll go up. I'll take this camera, change this resolution to let's say 1920 by 1920 again. I want the focal length to be 22 maybe, that's pretty crazy, this looks pretty amazing, let's see if it covers the camera at some point, and yeah, this is maybe too close, so this might be more interesting, let's look at it again, yeah, this looks much better. Let's take a flipbook of that as well. And uh, before and let's just raise the point size to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, so that's my setup for polar deformations. I had the time to play with polar coordinates and I found the research and development to be very inspiring. So I'll share a small compilation of it and then we can talk about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, it was super exciting talking about polar coordinates and sharing it with you. You can access this project for free from the description below. I have set up a Git repository with the project file set with lighting and materials as well. Otherwise, you're welcome to check out my site, there are a lot of free stuff over there as well. And this is actually my first time doing a Houdini tutorial and uh, putting myself in front of the camera. So. Uh, it's super awkward and exciting and uh, if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe so you can see the next one and uh, i'll see you then bye bye